Hey guys and welcome, this is day number 14. Thank you very much for tuning in and in this video I'm going to show you what I've learned about joints and how to build some, let's say, a little bit more complex assemblies in Fusion 360. Before this, I would like to shout out a big thank you to the tech team over at Autodesk for taking care of the latest issue. If you are following my videos, and I'm going to link the last one in the right hand upper corner for you guys, you have probably seen that I was struggling with some serious performance issues since the latest update and the guys over at Autodesk took care of this problem. They have rolled out a new update at the beginning of this week and everything is fixed, all runs smoothly. So thank you very much and now let's jump over to Fusion and take a look at joints and what you are able to build with these joints. Now, this is what I'm currently working on. We have a front drive sprocket here that was part of a previous video. I have created an idler wheel at the back, three return rollers that keep the chain in place at the top, and the bottom middle section is made out of the boogie suspension unit. And as you can see, it's pretty complex. It consists of many different parts, and one of these assemblies is the topic of today's video. So it's actually this one here. And as you can already tell from the blue icons, I have created this assembly uh, with the help of joints. And these joints allow me to move the component parts in a way like they would also do when the vehicle is in motion. The uh, boogie suspension unit is a very important part of the entire track system. It does not only keep the chain in place, but it also adds some tension to the chain and it allows the vehicle to roll over uneven terrain. In this video I will focus only on the creation of joints and not so much on how to create the single component parts because this process was actually pretty easy and straightforward and I've already talked about basic modeling techniques in previous videos. So uh, for this reason, I have prepared a new scene that contains all of the component parts of this suspension unit. And in the next five minutes, we will focus on the assembly dropdown menu that contains all of the joint commands. Before we start assembling, there are a few things you must know about joints. And the first one is that joints only operate between components. So this also explains why the new component command can be found in the assembly drop-down menu. It does not work between bodies. And if you want to know more about the difference between components and bodies, I'm going to link a short video series in the right hand upper corner. And the second thing is that it's usually a good idea to have at least one component grounded or fixed in the scene. So this allows the movement of the other components in the first place. Before I do this, let's take a brief look at what I have here. So the current design consists of several different components and some of these components have subcomponents in them. And in some components we have bodies and other components. And let me also turn on the uh, component colors so that we can distinguish between the parts a little bit easier. The very first thing I'm gonna do here is I search for this axis. So that's our main axis. I right click on it and select ground. So I'm not able to move it in the scene anymore. And at the same time, this um, grounded icon gets appended to the timeline at the bottom. And in the next step, I'm gonna arrange everything around this main axis. When I now click on a part in the viewport, I can move it around like so. And as soon as I do this, these two icons appear at the top. The first one is the capture position icon and the second one is the revert function. So let's say I would like to keep it in this position, then I click on capture position. And as soon as I do this, a new position icon appears in the timeline. When I now move the history marker over to the left again, it switches back in its previous position. And for instance, I can also select the position function and simply delete it. Now this is all great, but in this case, I would like the nuts to move with this plate. So I'm gonna revert the position zoom in a little bit, go to assembly and start with a rigid group. And now I'm going to select all of the nuts together with the plate, confirm this operation and turn these components into one group. So when I move it now, the nuts follow the plates. I'm going to revert the position, switch to the one on the right 
and also create a rigid group for these elements. And I'm gonna repeat the same process also for the pins. So again, rigid group, then I select all of the elements, confirm the operation, and let's create one more for this one down here. And as you can see, I have now four rigid group icons in the timeline. Next, let's do the same for the wheel, but before I can create a rigid body here, I have to move the tire over to the rim and I do this with the help of the align tool. I have set a shortcut key to this operation and then I hover over a face so that the snap point in the center appears and then I move over to the rim and depending on the face I select here, I can place the tire in different positions and of course I want to have mine place perfectly in the center so I hover over this inner cylinder and if you want to lock the selection simply uh, press and hold down the control key and now you are only able to select the snap points of the corresponding face I'm gonna place it in the center and confirm the operation before I continue I create a copy of the wheel because I need two of them so control C control V then I move this one over to the right. Then let's bring up the align command one more time. Select the center of this axis and place it in the center of the rim. And I'm gonna also do the same for this one over here. And now I can create two additional rigid groups. So capture the position first. And now we can start adding joints. When you do this, you have basically two options. You can create a regular joint or a as built joint. And the only difference between those two is that when you choose the regular joint, the first component gets moved to the second component. So if I select the inner cylinder of the first component and the center of my main axis as my second component, then the plate gets moved to the axis and I get a preview of the motion. You can change the motion in the motion tab. Here you have different types available, for instance, rigid or slider. And I set it back to revolute again. The axis is already right. And then I go back to position and confirm this operation. Now, when you click on this component, you can rotate it around the center axis. Let's repeat the same steps for the left plate. I'm gonna bring up the joint command again, select the first snap point and then also the center snap point of the main axis. The type of motion is already set to revolute. So I'm gonna confirm this and now we can move both parts around the center axis individually. And again, this is only possible because one component is grounded. So if I remove the ground command for our main axis, then the joints are still active, but now I move all of these parts around and that's of course not what we want. So I'm gonna revert the position and get rid of this unground icon in the timeline. And now everything works again as expected. Now let's add two additional revolute joints for the wheels. So I'll bring up the joint command again. And sometimes it can be a little bit tricky to select the right uh, snapping points. I'm gonna hide the wheel. Then I select the center point. And now I have to place this one in between faces. And of course, Fusion also comes with a mode to do this. So I switch from the simple to the between two faces mode. Select this face first, then the second one. And when I hover over the hole, I get prompted with a preview that tells me where the center point is located. So I left click on this and then the axis gets moved in place. I confirm the operation, show the wheel again, and it sits perfectly in between the two faces of the plate. Let's repeat these steps also for the second wheel. I'm gonna hide it again, bring up the joint command, select the center point, then the point between these two faces. 
confirm the operation, show the wheel again, and everything is positioned correctly. Before I can complete this assembly, I also have to place both parts of the pin accordingly. So I'm gonna bring up the joint command again. Then let's hide the main parts so that we can see the axis a little bit easier. I'm gonna select the center point and again the point between these two faces. Looking good. Let's repeat these steps for the other part of the pin. Center point and again the point in between these two faces. Then I'm gonna confirm this and show both parts of the pin again. Then I bring up the joint command one more time, but this time I go to assembly and select as built a joint because both parts of the pin are already uh, positioned correctly. Then I'm gonna select them. And I also have to select a snap point. So I choose uh, this midpoint here. The preview animation is looking good. I'm gonna confirm this. And now I should be able to move both sides of the boogie suspension up and down, like so. And the last step here is to add a constraint to the slider movement so uh, that I prevent these parts from intersecting. So that's of course not what I want. So I'm gonna look for the slider joint uh, that is located in the suspension component. I right click on it and select edit joint limits. And here let's add a minimum, which is set to zero and the maximum uh, can be set to something like 60.8. Let's see if this does the trick. Yeah, it does. And now I can move them pretty close together, not too close, so there's still a slight gap in between both plates. And we can of course also turn the wheels on both sides and that's pretty much it for this assembly. Now I can go back to the scene that contains all of the component parts of the tracks. I open up the data panel and drag and drop the newly created assembly into the scene. Then I'm gonna show the canvas, switch to the right view and try to position the part accordingly. Let's do the same also from the top view and confirm the move and copy command. Hide the canvas again and I'm gonna also close the data panel. And that's basically it for this video. Thank you very much for tuning in. Thanks for watching. Subscribe and in case you have any questions leave them in the comment section below and see you in the next one.